What's going on people? Welcome to the road trip for the big one. Manchester United facing Manchester City at Wembley. The first ever Manchester derby man in an FA Cup final and the time is now. I know it sounds cliche, you're going to say flex, don't say it, all of that stuff. But listen, all jokes aside, all banter aside, all gimmicks aside, man, this is it. This is the time, man. We have to do this. I think we're going to I think we're gonna do it. We have to believe, man. It's going to be an absolutely massive game. But before I get into the preview, this video is brought to you by Circle, as always. As you can see, QR code in the bottom-hand corner of the screen. Link in the video description below. There is a goal shifter, £500 jackpot special for today's game. You can join from £5 as well. Get involved. Get playing. You don't want to miss this game as well. And the guys in the studio will be playing along also. So make sure you download the app. It's very, very easy. Um, there'll be more explained uh, at the beginning of the match view as well. But it's so, so easy. Download the app, get involved, get inside the circle. And as you guys know, but if you don't and you're new to it, um, the shift, the changes, no matter what happens during the game, different events happen during the game, whether it's goal kicks, whether it's throw-ins, whether it's cards, whether it's goals, the shifter will move, the circle will move. And at the end of the game, you need to be landing um, on that shifter and you can win yourself £500. And there's various payouts at different points during the games as well. So make sure you guys get involved in that. Link in the video description below and QR code on screen. The talking's done. The talking's done. We face Manchester City today at Wembley. It's it's a massive, massive occasion. And when you're looking at some of the interviews that have been done in the lead up to it, some of the ones that we've done with Aaron Wan-Bissaka and we've done with other fan channels, I heard Varane talking, Casemiro, etc., David De Gea, Dallo, all, all of them. You can see what it means to these players, but for the right reasons. We want to win this game first and foremost for us. We've got an amazing opportunity to cap off a very good season so far. A very good season so far, considering we've got third and Carabao Cup in the bag. But we've got a chance to get another trophy and the biggest domestic trophy you can get. Bigger than the Carabao Cup. And for me, that's got to be the motivating factor. The players, the players, where are the players? The players have to play the game. Don't play the occasion. They have to play the game. They have to play the opponent. They can't play the emotions. They can't play what's riding on this in history should Manchester United not win this game and City go on to win their next two um, or their next one, should I say, if they win this. Like, we can't get caught up in that. And what I liked about what I've heard from the players and obviously seeing them this week in Carrington is that they're all tapped in for the right reasons. And I know it's easy to say, well, of course, they're going to be. They're not going to say, obviously, we want to stop them in the treble. But I could genuinely feel it. It was a sense of of realness about, you know, and sincerity about how they felt about this game. The question marks we've been talking about, what's going to happen with the, with the team? Anthony's probably going to miss out. Do you put Bruno Fernandes on the right-hand side? Do you go with pure energy um, and dynamism in midfield and go McTominay, Fred and Casemiro with pretty much no creativity in there? That's a big risk. Does Valt Weghorst come in? If he does, does he come in in the 10 and Rashford stays up front and you get um, Luke Jaden Sancho on the left? Does that happen? Or if Valt Weghorst does start, does he start up front with Rashford on the left and um, Sancho on the right, keeping Bruno in his preferred position? Or are we going to see a curveball of Alejandro Ganacho starting this game? That's the one I think won't happen. I mean, if it does, wow. And I'll be intrigued to see and I'll be excited. But he's done his best work from the bench. And I think if we go all hell for leather in terms of from the off and it doesn't work. And you've got Ganacho, Sancho and Rashford on the pitch, on the bench. What have you got to change the game? And we know that Ganacho can be a game changer. He's our secret weapon. Well, not so secret weapon as Manchester City found out last time we played them. So I actually, I, I don't know. I can see why Eric Tenag would start him on the bench. Ericsson, a lot of people said that he shouldn't start this game. You know, considering the intensity of it, you know, considering the magnitude of the game. Not saying that er Ericsson can't play in big games, but I just think for the energy side of things and locking down someone like De Bruyne or Gundogan or Foden or Bernardo Silva, whoever decides, whoever Pep Guardiola decides to put in his central midfield, you would think that Fred would be pivotal to that. But at the same time, you know, it, it, Fred could start another stinker because he keeps losing the ball every time we get it. Or, you know, he's bad in possession. There's there's trade-offs in every part of 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 that midfield, that we have to get the balance right. But one thing I know is that mistakes, mistakes can't happen 
frequently, if at all, today. I think for us to win today, we have to play a near on perfect game. We have to stay mentally tapped in, mentally tuned in, and we have to be clinical. You don't know how many chances you're going to get against this City side. And what we do know from watching the City side, although everybody's lauding them as the best team ever in the in the world, the world in the history of football, potentially what people say, maybe not that, but you get what must get my gist. They will give you chances in transition. You know, Pep Guardiola spoke about it as well. He said even when he faced Manchester United sides, when he faced Sir Alex, um, and even under Oli, he didn't say that, but even under Oli, the best way to beat Manchester City is in transition. They will give you chances on the counter, on the break. We know they're going to dominate the ball. Eric Ten Hag knows they're going to dominate the ball. We've been here time and time again. Any team who plays against City knows that. Um, and we have to be super sharp and we have to make every second count. Our big players, Casemiro, the Ghost, the Rafe, the Phantom as well, Varane, Bruno, they're the ones who have to really have top, top games today. We can't afford to carry anyone. To a man, to a T, we can't afford to carry anyone. No one can afford to play below a seven. Minimum. And that's that's like seven's the new five for today. It really is as a base point. Eric Ten Hag himself, he has to get it spot on tactically. Yes, the player's got to carry it out, but the initial setup's got to be right. He's got to get it right with the substitutions. He's got to get it right with the halftime team talk. It all has to be perfect. And we need City to probably not be at their best or... We're that bloody good that we didn't give them a chance to get to their best. One or the other, you know. And sometimes you need a little bit of luck. All of these things that go into a game of this magnitude um, all need to go in your favour. And I just think that if we do this, if we beat Manchester City today, it would just be a massive, massive achievement. But not just the fact that it's beating City and stopping them doing the treble. That's, that's, that's a byproduct. That's a byproduct of saying that we've won two trophies in our first season with Eric Ten Hag. And wow, this man is kicking us on to big things. Now, at the same time, and this isn't to sound defeatist, I've said this, though, quite a few times, and I want you to take this the right way. And Eric Ten Hag said it in a presser yesterday. This one game doesn't define the progress we have or haven't made this season. For me, the progress is there. For me, we're going in the right direction. Still far off where we want to be, of course. But if we beat City today, it doesn't mean that we're so close to them and actually that that's it. They're not even that difficult to beat. And actually, this shows that, you know, we're on their level. Doesn't mean that. You can't take it out of context. And if we lose to them, it doesn't mean we're any further away than we was as at the time of me recording this video. We know how far we are away from City. Most teams know how far away they are from City. Arsenal felt that this season. But at the same time, we have to keep everything in context, win or lose. You know, it's going to hurt if we lose this. Of course it will. It's going to hurt even more if City go on to win the treble. But if they do go on to win the treble, guys, that's on us. That's on us. That's happened on our watch. That's happened in our face. And that City team are going to get to be arguably the best team ever and compared to our treble team because they won it on our watch, in our face, in that game. So... Look, you can argue Manchester City have, you know, excuse the quote, bigger fish to fry with the Champions League final. If you ask a City fan which one would they rather win, you probably get more of them saying the Champions League final. This is bigger for us than it is for them. Maybe that will come into the game. Maybe it won't. I don't know. But we have to focus on ourselves. And yes, of course, as fans, we want to smash City because it's City and we want to stop them doing the treble. But ultimately... The real reason, the biggest reason we should want to win this game is to cap off a great season and to solidify our manager um, and rubber stamp that he's taken us in the right direction. Um, and it will be two trophies, two, you know, especially the FA Cup, a big trophy in his first season with third in the bag in the Premier League. It will be a massive, massive win for us today. My prediction, like I said, 2-1 I'm going with. I think it's going to be nervy. I think it's going to be tight. Um if we don't get the first goal, I do fear for us. I do. I know we came back um, under controversial circumstances with that offside goal that was given um, at Old Trafford. But that's a different. That's a different game. That's this is a different city. This is a different Man United as well. But I, um, I fear for us if we don't if we don't score first. But no matter what happens, this could be one of the best days. Um, of our of our lives well one of the yeah one of the best days in history of course it's, it's it's the first manchester derby final of course it will go down in history could be one of our best days ever or it literally be, could, could be one of the worst so tune in we've got amazing content coming your way um 
We've got a jam-packed full studio crew um, at UVHQ. We've got Minna at the ground. She's going to the game. KG's going to the game. Rich is going to the game. Who else is going to the game? Someone else. Cam's going to the game. So a lot of us down there as well. Um, and me and Josh will be there with hopefully, if we win, the type of content we can get, honestly, is going to be unreal. Um, it really will. But wishing the boys the best. Believe, guys. Don't be nervous. Don't see, don't see this as pressure. See this as an opportunity. This is an opportunity to win more silverware. Let's believe. Come on, boys. <laughs>